My name is Stephen Talpins. I am the Vice President of the Institute for Behavior and Health. IBH's mission is to reduce the use and abuse of illegal and legal drugs. There's two different ways to prove that someone is guilty of DUI. The first is by showing that the person is impaired by whatever substance they took. The second is by showing that they took a particular substance or exceeded a specific limit. The most common example and the one that everyone's familiar with is alcohol. Everyone in this country knows that if you drive with a blood alcohol level exceeding 0.08, you are per se guilty of DUI, even if even if you don't look impaired. We're creating a similar thing for drugs. If you drive with any amount of certain types of drugs in your systems, then you would be guilty of DUI as well, even if you're not impaired by those drugs. The problem with the impaired driving laws is that proving impairment can be a very difficult thing to do, particularly since a lot of jurors aren't familiar with the different types of drugs that are available today. So having a per se law makes the prosecutor's job a lot easier. We've done a great job reducing drunk driving. Alcohol impaired driving has dropped dramatically. All the statistics show that. Um, at the same time, drug driving is actually on the increase. In 2005, 28% of people with known test results who were involved in accidents involving death tested positive for drugs. In 2009, that number was up to 33%. The difference is the public understands drunk driving and a lot of resources have been put toward battling drunk driving. Unfortunately, we haven't seen the same commitment to drug driving. We need to better educate the public. We need better laws. We need better enforcement. It's really that simple.